All right, this is uh, Anu, and uh, this is the debunking the out of Africa. A lot of people uh, get that mixed up, but that's just uh, debunking that white people came from black folks. <clears throat> you have to excuse my voice a little bit. I'm a little under the weather. Is the out of Africa theory out? This came from the Scientific American. <clears throat> An examination of over 5,000 teeth from early human ancestor shows that many of the first Europeans probably came from Asia. Hence the word Caucasians. The study was led by Maria Martinon Torres Torres a paleobiologist at the National Research Center on Human Evolution in Burgos, Spain. The research team analyzed the choppers of human ancestors from the uh, Pleistocene in the late Pliocene epochs. Teeth are the best genetic marker that we have in the fossil record itself. Uh, Trinka says, because they are as close as we can get to a reflection of the individual's genetic makeup. The reason tooth crowns are genetically determined and thus reflect an individual's genotype and are not affected by environmental, environmental stress during development. Scientists found that teeth from African species were, different, were a different shape or morphology than those from Eurasian samples. The researchers wrote that teeth toward the front of the mouth from Eurasians had more morphological robustity, <laughs> such as a triangular sh uh, shovel shape. Uh. Their back teeth were smaller and had smoother chewing surfaces. The rear teeth from African samples were larger and the chewing surfaces on them more pointy and jagged. According to the report released by these so-called white scientists published and republished in various authoritative scientific and political journals, Neanderthals are the ancestors of uh, Europeans. Those so-called white European researchers searching for their ancestral links had compared the Neanderthal genome with the genome of five living people. One sand from southern Africa, one Yoruba in West, from West Africa, one Paipu from New uh, Guinea, and one Han Chinese and one French person. To their amazement, those scientists discovered that 1% to 4% of these latter three sample DNA, being the New uh, Guin Guinean, the Han Chinese, and the French genome, is shared with Neanderthals. Indubitable scientific proof that Neanderthals were part ancestors of Europeans and Chinese. The West African samples were found not to have any Neanderthal genomes confirming that black West Africans are the original pure human beings. The ape gene lives with the other nations. Africans come from the original human stock. Australian historian Greg Jeffries explains that the whole out of Africa myth has its roots in the mainstream academic campaign in the 1990s to remove the concept of race. When I did my degree, they all spent a lot of time on the out of Africa thing, but it's been completely disproved by genetics. Mainstream still hold on to it. It did begin the early 90s and the academics most responsible for the cementing out of both the out of Africa theory and the complain, 
complementary common ancestral African mother given the name Eve in the public arena in nearly every curriculum where Professor Allen C. Wilson and Rebecca L. can. And another thing that helped to stick around was during segregation when it was made by um, some white dude named Carlton Coon. And uh, they tried to use it to say that white people was the last stage of evolution and that uh, we were uncivilized because we was like 2,000 years uh, de-evolved from them or some shit. You know, and it wasn't really Carlton Coon's fault, even though he didn't ever come out and say that shit wasn't accurate. Uh, but they used the information that he he put together to describe uh, the different races coming out of Africa. Uh, they used that shit uh, for political advantage. Central to results of this extensive examination of haplogroups was the absence of any African genes. So lacking was the sampling of African genetic involvement. The researchers stated in their introduction that finding the Europeoid haplogroups did not descend from African haplogroups A or B is supported by the fact that the bearers of the Europeoid as well as all non-African groups did not carry either SNIs uh, all these different genomes. We're going to go over that in, in just a minute. With the haplogroups not present in any African genes and in absence of dozens of African genetic markers, it is very difficult, nigh on impossible, to sustain any link to Africa. The researchers are adamant that their extensive study offers evidence to re-examine the validity of the out of Africa concept. They see no genetic proof sustaining an African precedence in the uh, Homo sapien tree. It maintain that a more plausible interpretation might have been that both current Africans and non-Africans descend separately from a more ancient common ancestor, thus forming a proverbial fort. And that's their way of still trying to cling on to the shit, you know what I'm saying? We regard the claim of a more plausible explanation as a gross understatement. Since there is absolutely nothing plausibly African turning up in any test tubes. In fact, the researchers made note of their repeated absence stating that not one non-African participant out of more than 400 individuals in the project tested positive to any of, any of 13 African subclades of haplogroup A. So they're not even, they're not dating back to the oldest haplogroups in Africa. The only remaining uncertainty relates to the identity of this more ancient common ancestor. All that can be stated with confidence is that humanity's ancestor did not reside in Africa. So whenever we did interbreed, it wasn't with no fucking Africa. I mean, it didn't come from two Africans, you know. And, you know, it didn't lose this pigment and all that shit they made up. Neanderthals lived aside humans for centuries, latest study shows. This is the article I took and, and I added clip notes to this shit. The latest and most precise date for when Neanderthals finally disappeared shows that the last time they walked the earth was 40,000 years ago. And they probably went extinct in Western Europe. A study published in... Nature Communications reveals a dramatic series of events, including major migrations from both Western Europe and Eurasia, and signs of unexplained genetic turnover about 4,000, 5,000 years ago. We have established that the genetic foundations for modern Europe were only established in the mid-Neolithic after this major genetic transition around 4,000 years ago. This genetic, this genetic diversity was modified further by a series of incoming and expanding cultures from Liberia and Eastern Europe through the late Neolithic. African owners of Europe, the so-called Grimaldi, they got restaurants named at, after them, a nation of black Africans, were the first modern human nation to arrive in Europe. Their significance has always been clouded by the funny 
uh, nomenclatures used to designate them, i.e. Grimaldi, Neolithic men. This reason for this being that many modern European historians steeped in the pervasive racism of their culture will earnestly wish away the significance of the Grimaldi and the founding role of Africans in the making of Europe in its present day inhabitants. So we was there, you know what I'm saying? They still can't find no uh, genetic markers. Now let's just show you how how rare our ancestors was, was trying to interbreed with these beasts. Like, y'all don't even realize. The founding of Europe by Africans is one of those inconvenient historical facts that completely make a mess of the Eurocentric matrix of world history as developed by the Western culture. They left Africa in waves of migratory movements beginning as far as the Cape of South Africa. They were in Europe as early as 45,000 years ago. On their way, most of them stopped, settled, and developed many nations in Africa. Many of those nations founded the, the groupings that currently exist in modern states of Central West and North Africa. The Gamaldi brought the first material culture to Europe Evidence of which they left all over Southern Europe. These include artifacts such as gemstone pendants, stone implements, and symbols of communication. And they was what? It just said they was, man, that was tens of thousands of years ago. And they had that already. So we're going to look at some cavemen. Two local German men, direct descendants of 3,000 year old cave dwellers and uh, i'm not gonna read all that that's all y'all that's that's the most important thing you need to see if his dna was gonna go back to africa it wouldn't have went to no damn cave man it skipped right over that shit so what what was we doing three thousand years ago mystery of three thousand year old african civilization we got a whole civil ruins of civilizations and it was uh, the forgotten Sahara people made the desert bloom, built impressive cities, and controlled an empire of 70,000 square miles. We had a 70,000 square mile civilization while these motherfuckers was living in caves. Nearly all scholars had thought this ancient people known as Garamantes had been little more than desert barbarians living in one small town, a couple of villages, and scattered nomadic encampments. The Garamantes had at least three big cities, 20 other important settlements in the middle of the world's largest desert in the desert where rainfall averages only half an inch each year was successfully cultivated. So that's what we was doing 3,000 years ago. Major things. You know what I'm saying? We had a, in that same city, there was a 3,000 mile network of underground irri irrigation canals that was built by the Garamantes, which tapped into natural uh, fossil water supplies. And it was laid there more than 40,000 years ago when rain last fell plentiful in the area. So we was already tapping into underground water and shit, had the shit running into the uh, 70,000 square mile city. Come on. This here talks about um, there are many examples that could be given to illustrate this situation, but the more the important point is that the complexity of West Africa environment as a whole provided conditions conductive to the development of a complex network of regional trade. Within that network, the West Africans Savannah, relatively easy to traverse, played it an essential part. It is likely that such trading activity was all, almost as old as West African food production. And indeed, its remoter origins must have been even earlier. Thus, the beginning of a trade network were surely already in existence about 3,000 years ago. So, shit, we was already... A productive civilization 3,000 years ago. We had running water damn near, a trade system, all kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? 
And that shit goes on to talk about everything that they uh they traded from Rice and 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 all kind of stuff. So now you got this Cheddar Village residence related to nine thousand year old Cheddar Man, another caveman. The Cheddar Man is a human man whose nine thousand year old skeleton was found in the cave in Cheddar George, uh, Somerset, England. Mitochondrial DNA was extracted from one of the, and that's mitochondrial DNA was extracted from one of the Cheddar Man's teeth, as well as from another 12,000-year-old tooth found in the cave. Both samples belong to mtDNA haplogroup U5. We're not going to get into the haplogroups and stuff. Uh, just know that, you know, they tested uh, a lot of people in the uh, that's what they went back to this damn cave, man. I know damn African. And uh, let's see what we was doing 9,000, 12,000 years ago. And uh, this is uh, from a book called The History of Africa, The Quest for Eternal Harmony. Africans begin living by agriculture, that is the plant growing and harvesting of food, more than 8,000 years ago. During the New Stone Age of the Sahara Desert was fertile and rich land with tall trees and green meadows. In fact, many rivers flowed through the land that is now hot and dry. It appears that cattle were plentiful and fish were in abundance during this period. Already scientists have discovered that the Mauritania to Egypt, numerous stone tools, bone uh, harpoons, and fishing hooks all across the desert. Furthermore, the rock paintings on the walls of, of caves show animals, people, and gods left behind by still earlier Africans. That was 8,000 years ago. We, we already had, uh, we was fishing, doing all kind of shit, and we already had a deity system, which means there was a political system in place already. This is uh, from the book, The People, Peopling of Africa, Geographic Interpretation. A distinct in industry known as Iberan, formerly Kenya Capsian, has been identified in the rift valleys of eastern Africa. An especially, an especially well-developed version was found around Lake Nakuru. It dates back 12,000 years. The hints of microlithic tendencies can be detected in even earlier tool specimens. An exclusive use of op obsidian uh, characterizes the uh, the Iberon, and since 8,000 years ago, sedentary tendencies based on fishing are evident. A very wet period set in 10,000 years ago in Lake Nakuru was much larger than it is now. Supported by bountiful food, the population grew and settlements became more permanent. So that talks about us uh, settling 12,000 years ago. So we got a, a deep and rich history that they well aware of. And they were still just sitting in the caves chilling and shit. Interbreeding with modern humans. Groundbreaking analysis of the Neanderthal genome, nuclear DNA and genes, published in 2010 shows the, that modern humans and Neanderthals did interbreed although on a very limited scale. Researchers compared the genomes of five modern humans with the Neanderthal, discovering that Europeans and Asians share about 1% to 4% of their DNA with Neanderthals, and Africans none. This suggests that modern humans bred with Neanderthals after moderns left Africa, but before they spread, in, spread to Asia and Europe. The most likely location is the Levant, where both species coexisted for thousands of years at various times between 50 to 90,000 years ago. Interestingly, the data doesn't support wide-scale interbreeding between the species in Europe, where it would have been most likely given their close proximity. So we wasn't even fucking with them back then, so all this shit y'all doing now is new. You know what I'm saying? A lot of this shit is new to us. Researchers are... Now questioning why interbreeding occurred on such a low scale, given that it was biologically possible. The answer might lie in cultural differences, because they was 
The answer is in cultural differences. I mean, shit. You see what we was doing? We wasn't trying to live up in the caves and shit. Okay, so we got the relationship between modern humans and Neanderthals. The relationship between modern humans and archaic hominins, particularly Neanderthals, has been the subject of much debate. While the idea that modern humans originated in Africa and spread out to other parts of the world, the outer Africa, is widely accepted, several scenarios have been proposed to account for the replacement of archaic hominin populations. Under strict replacement, modern humans did not interbreed with the archaic populations as they expanded their geographic range. In less strict scenarios, admixture between the populations occurred, but in small amounts, with the bulk of modern human ancestry tied to Africa. The multi-regional hypothesis holds that hominid populations in Eurasia and Africa were held together by gene flow. Fossil and genetic evidence supports an African origin for Homo sapiens. Okay, mitochondria DNA shows the difference between Neanderthals and modern humans. The mitochondria DNA is, has to do with your mother. Now, I ain't going to get into detail with that because I, I can just show you. Okay, nuclear DNA is, in, is, is inherited by all your ancestors. Now, if if it clearly tells you that mitochondria DNA is something that's inherited by your mother, and, and science is telling us that the black woman is one of the old, it is the oldest uh, person to walk the earth, and white people empty DNA can't be traced to her. You know what I'm saying? You looking at this? If this was a white man, this gonna stop right here. You know what I'm saying? This shit's not. It, it's 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 not it's not adding up, you know what I'm saying? So to understand uh what I'm gonna close with, because I have the uh the article, I want to go over a quick a uh, few quick points. What is a haplogroup? Um uh, we're gonna in human genetics, a human mitochondria DNA haplogroup is a haplogroup defined by differences in human mitochondria DNA. And they base that off regional information. What is a haplotype? A haplotype is a particular pattern of sequential SMPs found on a single chromosome. An SMP is a single nucleotide polymorphism. These are positions in a genome where some individuals have one nucleotide and others have different nucleotide. And polymorphism means many forms. Single nucleotide polymorphisms consist of a single change in the DNA code. SMPs occur with various allele frequencies. Those in the 20 to 40 percent range are useful for genetic mapping. Now, these are one of the smallest keys to genetic mapping. You know what I'm saying? The SMPs go into the haplotypes. The haplotypes eventually uh, just, just decide the haplogroup. Now, what is a genome? The genome broadly refers to the total amount of DNA in a single cell of an organism, including its genes. The whole hereditary information of an organism that is encoded in the DNA. Now, with that being said, I'm going to close with this. Reexamining the out of Africa theory, it's, it's, it was always a theory, never a fact, in the origin of Europeoids, Caucasoids, in light of DNA genealogy. And this is from some Russian scientists at the Academy of DNA Gene Genealogy, uh, Newton, USA. And it was received January 7, 2012, revised February 4, 2012, and accepted March 10, 2012. So it didn't take them no time to accept this as a, as a fact. And I wanted to skip 
most of this because this is a lot of confusing lingo for no reason. And I want to go right here. The finding that the Europeoid haplogroups did not descend from African haplo haplogroups A or B is supported by the fact that the bearers of the Europeoid haplogroups as well as all non-African haplogroups did not carry either SMPs and you have this long list of um, single nuclear uh, tides that, that they did not carry. Haplogroup A in its subclades SMPs. And you got some more. You know what I'm saying? You got all this information showing you. And this is a long, if you want this, um, this, this uh, essay that was written by these Russian scientists proving this, that this shit is not real. Um, you can also send me a Gmail for this. I will send this to you. But this is showing you that uh, the to the smallest genomes that decide uh, your haplotype to haplogroup, they don't. We don't share anything with them. You know what I'm saying? So there goes your out of Africa theory. <laughs>